Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. Very familiar verses for us. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. The title message is, Will you finish the race? Will you finish the race? Will you finish the race? The Bible says, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Father God, we thank you once again for allowing us to gather at the Father of the Church to hear your preaching. We ask you that you will fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit, give him the liberty and the power to preach your word unto us, give him three chords, Lord God. And Lord God, pray that you open our hearts, eyes, and ears to your word. Help us not to think about the things that are happening in our lives or the things that are happening out, outside of this building or will happen. But as of right now, for just a little moment, help us to just fully give ourselves to you and your word. We ask you that you protect us from those attacks. Lord God, help each other one of us to look up to you, the author and finish of our faith. Yes. And as Apostle Paul had the testimony, help us to fight the good fight of faith and finish the course. Yes. Uh, we need your help, Lord God. We can't do it by our own selves. Amen. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so the question is, will you finish the race? This day and age, you don't really see too many people who's committed to finishing things. When things get hard, people just quit. People commit to marriage. They said it's hard. We fight too much. We don't like the same things that we used to or we thought. We don't like the in-laws. We don't like the, you know, everything, the habits that's coming out. So people quit. People start studying. And they said, it's too hard. I can't go on. They quit. You know, people start cooking. They said, it's too hard. You know, I quit. Some people, they need to quit. But hey, at least finish, you know, and then you quit. Yeah. But a lot of people, when it comes to job, oh, man, this laborous job, this construction job, I didn't expect it to be this hard. Yeah. So they just quit, right? So people quit a lot this day and age. Even daily life, people quit. Oh, you know, I'm going to read a lot of Bible today. You read a verse, I quit. Yeah. Right? I'm going to pray a lot today. You pray for five seconds, you quit. I'm going to study the Bible today. You know, look at some YouTube channels. You look at for five seconds, commercial comes in, you quit. So I got to go somewhere else. Attention span of everybody this day and age is so short, so people quit. How many Christians will really finish the race is a question, but more important than that, how will you finish the race? Because I believe that people here and people who's listening, I know you will finish your course, but how will you finish it? I mean, we have a great example in Apostle Paul. You know, he, he fought a good fight and he finished his course. There are a lot of, you know, unfortunate stories when it comes to sport, sporting events. You know, if you like football, you know, you have to cross the goal line in order to score. Some people celebrate early, and then they drop the fall right before they cross the line and they don't score. And unfortunately, some people in big, biggest events, you know, whether it's Olympic, you know, World Games, you know, they celebrate too early. Recently, 
you know, there was a race, you know, I think you call it like a walking race, this Olympic event. The Spaniard woman, she celebrated too early. So she could have won bronze medal, but she lost it to a Ukrainian woman. She was trying to take her, you know, flag out and trying to celebrate, and she loses by, you know, very short margin. During the Asian Games, this Korean guy, he celebrated too early and lost a gold medal. But it wasn't just him. His team lost. It was a team event. And it wasn't just a loss of medal and gold medal. They lost the privilege to skip the army. So because of him, his teammates and himself has to go to army. You know, toil, toil away what is 18 months. Yeah. So a lot of people don't finish the race that well. And some people, or if not majority, they don't even finish the race. As Christians, you and I have to be determined to finish the race. You and I have to be determined to finish the race well. You and I have to be determined, no matter what comes our way, we have to just march on and finish. You and I have to endure, just like what the Bible says, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You have to have that mentality. Whenever I start things, I'm going to finish. Jesus Christ said, it is finished. Greatest statement. Because he finished, you and I can have this privilege and opportunity to get saved, accept him as our Lord and Savior, and serve him. Because he finished. So whoever you are, whether you're young, old, whether you are, you know, fit, not fit, it doesn't matter. You have to finish. If you say, I'm going to stand up for the Word of God, King James Bible, then you have to finish. You have to stand for it until you die or until the day of the rapture. You have to stand. You have to finish whatever you have started. And it comes with every part of your life. You know, don't just think that, okay, if I'm faithful in spiritual things, it's okay if I'm not faithful in other things. No. Bible says, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. So every part of your life, you have to do well and you have to finish. Again, so if you are studying, you have to finish. If you are working, you have to finish. If you are in marriage, you have to finish. You have to finish things. You know, common characteristic, again, this day and age, especially Generation Z and a lot of Generation M, millennials, Their main characteristic is that they never finish anything. Their motto is always next day, next day, next day, next day. You know, Bob Jones Sr. always said, if you can't do it today, finish it. You don't have to wait until tomorrow. You know, a lot of successful people, if they could do it today, they do it today. They don't do it tomorrow. They don't do it day after. Even if certain things are due, I mean, you know, I'm guilty, especially as we go back to our school days, you know, school projects. Which are the people always wait until the end to finish their projects? Like day before, night before, some people the day of, right? Yes. It's due on the second period, fourth period after lunch. So you just do your project during the other periods, right? That's a procrastination at its worst. Yes. And if 99.9% of people would agree that you had all the opportunity to finish before it was due. And if teacher assigned it a month ago, two months ago, you probably could have finished it a week or two ago minimum. But for us, our mentality is always like, you know, we're okay. We could wait until the end. So... If you want to finish the race well, point number one, you can't be an emergency Christian. What does that mean? Everything becomes emergency in your life because of your procrastination. I finish. I'm doing well. But you don't have to make it an emergency. If you started a long time ago when you weren't lazy, don't be an emergency Bible reader. You don't read on a daily basis. 
where you should be somewhere at Psalms right now if you started from Genesis, you're like, ah, oh, I still got six more months to go. You're still in Exodus. November comes. Majority of people don't even finish, but you're like, you know what? I'm going to finish. I'm going to show the world that I could finish. So you do finish. You cram everything in. But you don't remember anything. You know, people who study the day before, even though they get good grades, they don't remember anything. It doesn't last. Don't think that God's going to bless you if you try to cram everything in suddenly. He wants consistency. He wants someone who's hardworking. He wants someone who's diligent. He wants someone who's dedicated, who's running the race on a daily basis. Many times you and I always wait until the end. Can you imagine if you have that kind of mindset when you have a five-mile test tomorrow? If you want to run a five-mile, it's going to take some training. Yes. I mean, if you're running marathon, it's going to take a lot of training. But Bible says we're running a marathon. Can you imagine if you tell yourself, okay, uh, my marathon or five mile, 5K, anything, it's still long, right, for regular people. It's happening months from now. So I got a whole month to train my body. First week goes by, you know, you're like, oh, I wanted to eat well and exercise. Oh, it's okay, too late, you know, I couldn't defeat my cravings at late night. Second week comes, oh, man, I'm trying, I'm trying. So you kind of try first day, second day of the week. You're like, oh, it's too hard. We have two more weeks left. Third week is crunch time. You're like really, really trying hard, right? You're eating okay, but you don't exercise. Fourth week, you're like, oh man, I'm eating well and I'm, I need to exercise. You kind of do it, but your body can't take it. The day of the race comes, you try to run, and then you have to quit because your body can't take it, yes. right? There's still always exceptional people who's born like that. But you and me, we're not like that, majority of us. So you can't even finish the race. You're halfway through, you're quarter way through, and you're like, oh, out of breath. You're about to die. Your heart is about to explode, right? But that's what happens. A lot of times, Christians, because you are so lazy that you always have to wait until the end the last second to do anything in your life, where it's the ministry, where it's God's things, right? You just have to wait and wait and wait and wait, right? For example, I'm, I'm guilty, you know, I'm just like you. Like we've worked to be at a summer camp, right? Then you start memorizing Bible verses. And a lot of people always have to wait until the end trying to memorize it. You have like first four days to memorize. And you, I don't know, for whatever reason, you did not. And on the last day, you're trying to memorize. And you and I cannot give this excuse that we've gotten old. You know, our brain doesn't you know, function as well. It might be true, but if you and I could memorize certain things that's important to us, Bible is the most important thing. There's no excuse for us to not to memorize it. Then it just becomes emergency. You're trying to cram everything in. You're like, ah, oh, you know, verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, you know, verse 20. And then somehow you pass, right? Next day, or even an hour later, you don't remember anything. Well, what was verse 3 again? Oh, verse 7 again, right? And then Sunday comes, you're out there, you know, just moving your lips <laughs> without making sound, yes. you know? Well, that's not a good, you laugh because, you know, it happens, but that's not a good testimony. That's not a good testimony to Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, you're not trying to fool the people here, right? You're trying to fool Lord Jesus Christ. But you can never fool Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's inside of you. He sees everything that you do. He's God himself, creator of the universe, you know, omnipotent, omniscient, everything he knows, all powerful. And you and I are trying to play this, you know, game. When was last time when a task was given to you, you did it right away? It's due two weeks from now, 
but you just did it. Because I don't want to procrastinate. If I can do it today, instead of wasting my time doing stupid things, I'll just do what I need to do. You know, I've never seen, including myself, people who truly succeed by procrastinating continuously. Right? If you have time to do it, do it. If you have time to read the Word of God at any opportunity, do it. If you have time to pray, you pray. If you have time to witness, you witness. If you have time to study, study. Those free times aren't for you to just lolling and do nothing. If you need to rest, rest. You know, don't be this person who always goes, I work too hard, I do too much in the ministry, I'm burnt out. You're burnt out because of yourself. I mean, at the end of the day, you're saying, I'm burnt out because of too much responsibility, blah, blah, blah. No. From what I've seen, right? I mean, I mean, one time I was going full time in everything, right? Work, school, church ministry, you know, Bible college, everything. But I still had time to do things. I mean, probably I had like a, you know, I mean, I even had like a, what was it? Like a graveyard shift job at that time. So my work was like from midnight to like, you know, next day two. You know, sometimes a lot of time you went over. And then you have school and you have church. Sometimes have to go to Bible college. And then sleep maybe an hour or two. Go do something, you know, work and do that, right? Even then, you know, I had all the time in the world to do what I needed to do. Why? Because God will not allow you to give an excuse to fail. God always provides everything that you need to be a successful Christian in your life. It's you, it's me who fail him. It's you, it's I who always give excuses. I work too much. I study too much. I have so much other things going on. God never told you to consume yourself with things of the world. It's just things that you have to do to make a living. But you, that's why I don't finish. And emergency Christians, a lot of times, don't even finish. They're like, okay, I give up. <laughs> and I started too late. Why do you always have to be that person who always starts too late? Right? It's about time. You change your attitude. It's about time you change your behavior. It's about time you're like Lord Jesus Christ. He just gets things done. He got things done. Just like that. You and I say we want to be like the Lord. We want to learn from him. We want him to work in our life. We get our strength from him. Just do it. Right? You just, if it's something that you could do right now, then do it. It's like, you know, I always wanted to learn the Bible the right way. The best way I learn is take notes. Then you take notes. The best way I learn is just listen to it 100%. You do it. But don't wait until next week. Like, okay, I'm going to prepare myself next week to be the best, you know, Bible listener. I'm going to wait until next week until I let the preaching hit my heart to change me. I'm going to wait until the next week. I'm going to wait until the next week. You know, make it on time to church, right? You know, we have a lot of things going on in our life, right? If you are meeting someone like, I don't know, who's important this day and age, right? Maybe Biden. You're meeting Trump, right? They say, okay, let's meet. Let's meet Saturday at 10 a.m. Say you're meeting President of the United States. Can you believe? Would you think that you'll be late to that meeting? I don't think so. Knowing you as a human being, knowing you who loves the fleshly things, no, you're going to be there probably like 30 minutes before, preparing yourself, right? How I'm, what am I going to talk with that president, right? And well, it's such a great opportunity, right? And especially if he's a good president, right? Some of the good ones that we had in the past, God-fearing, save, you know, presidents. You'll be like, oh, man, it's an honor for me. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to dress my best, you know, attire, and I'm going to meet him. You're going to be prepared. 
You do that for human beings, right? I do that for human beings. But how come you don't do it for Lord Jesus Christ? He's, he's a creator. He saved you from eternal lake of fire. You can't give your best to him. I don't understand, right? Why is it that you give best at work, best at school, best at home, best when you're playing outside, but when you're meeting your friends, you know, but exercising, but you can't give your best for Lord Jesus Christ. What's wrong with you, right? He's not that important to you. You know, he's always that person. It has to be emergency, emergency, emergency for you to get his attention or you get attention about him. You know, when do people move when it comes to emergency, right? They give attention to that situation or the person. Why do you think when you go to hospital, emergency room takes the precedence priority over everybody? Because they need attention, right? Christ shouldn't be that emergency person. No. He should be that number one all the time. You know, if Lord doesn't like punish you and chastise you as a loving father, you'll never do things ahead of time when it comes to things of God. Yeah. Why is it that you always have to wait? Why do you always have to lose to your flesh? Right? You have to understand, you and I still can commit all the horrible sins that we can commit. Technically, doctrinally, if you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, your soul cannot sin anymore. You cannot sin anymore. Through the spiritual circumcision, it's body and soul separated forever. Right? That's a Revelation 21, 8. You know, but the fear from the Bible, mother, her mother, so to all liars, shall have their pride in the which burn the fire and burn with singing. It doesn't apply to us, right? Doctrinally. Yeah. However, we have this physical body. Until the day of redemption, until the Lord comes back, or until we die, we're still going to have to deal with it. Yeah. Then what does it want to do? It wants to do all the wrong things. It wants to commit every sin that's listed in the Word of God. Yes. That you and I shouldn't be committing. Then, if you're an emergency Christian, you're always going to commit that sin. Man, I'm telling you from experience. When you are lazy, when you are always waiting until last second to finish things, in between, what do you think is happening? When you should be concentrating on the right things, when you should be concentrating on Lord Jesus Christ, and who you would be concentrating? You're concentrating at your flesh, the devil, and the world. That's what you're doing. And what happens when you are full of the devil, the world, and the flesh? It's your fruits are all sin. It's just sin after sin after sin after sin. When was the last time you actually did something for the Lord way ahead of time? No, way ahead of time, right? Way ahead of time. You're like, what is it? You ask yourself. Bible has all the things, right? Bible says, study to show thyself, approve unto God. Command, workmen that not, needed not to be ashamed, write the evangel word of truth in 2 Timothy verse 15. Have you been studying, right? It's a command. Are you going to wait until like, you're about to die to start studying the word of God? Because now you feel like you're in an emergency. Isn't it true? Yes. Like, you have all the opportunity to study the word of God, but you have to wait. Until you're sick, you have to study. Until you lose your job, you have to study. Until you lose everything, you start studying. Why don't you ever study when you have everything? When the Lord has blessed you with a lot of things, why don't you study? Why is it that human beings' mentality is always like, when things are going good, it's me. When things are going bad, I need God. Why is it that always, when things are going good, I don't need God? You say with your mouth, Oh, yeah, it's Lord blessing me. Thank God for everything. For your action doesn't show it at all. If you're really truthful towards God, Lord Jesus Christ, all the blessings that you have, then you spend more time with him yeah. because you're so thankful. You want to have more fellowship with him. No, no, no. Man. Your body's healed. Instead of spending more time in your knees on prayer, okay, I'm going to go out there. 
I miss playing tennis. I miss playing basketball. I miss playing baseball. Not that it's bad, but it's backwards, right? You got to spend more time with the Lord for giving you better health. Amen. I'm like, oh, man, I did so well on my test, you know? And it was emergency. I didn't study at all. I don't even say it. You know, I hear some Christians, they're so proud that you didn't study, but you got good grades, right? What's the point? I'm lazy. I was fortunate. I got good grades. What are you teaching young kids? Don't study until the day of the test, and then you might do well. Oh, what a bad testimony you've been all this time. Yes. You have to continue to have to study. You know, real good grades are if you've been putting your time studying and getting those grades, right? There's reason why people have to be consistent. You know, even at work, you should never be that person when project is due, work is due, you just lollygag for first, you know, two weeks or first six hours of the day, and you suddenly spend all your time trying to finish it, right? Will that work ever be as good as if you have spent your time? No. no. You and I say we want to give our best to the Lord, right? As an emergency Christian, you can never give best to the Lord because you're going to miss something. You're going to miss something, right? If you and I can see a picture to find faults and he gives us, you know, we need at least 24 hours to see it, to see the full picture, but you waited until the last minute and you only have five hours to see it, someone who had 24 hours to see and who took 24 hours to see it, and someone who only spent you know, five hours to see it, there's going to be a difference. Sometimes, short term, you can't really see too much different. But it definitely shows as time passes by. That's why so many Christians, after they've gotten saved, they're still at the same place. They're still in the same lane. They're still in the same position. You know, when you're in a race, especially track and field, they tell you, because, you know, beginning, I talked about a couple of cases where they couldn't finish it well and they lost their medals, right? They say, you run as hard as you can, at least another five meters, you know, like another, like a, at least, you know, what is it, conversion, I don't know, 10 yards or five yards more, so that you are sure that you have finished all the way. I mean, if that's just the regular, you know, exercise, you know, Olympic events, right? Athletes. And we're compared to that as runners in the Bible. When was last time have you really truly finished it all the way? And you can't be like, oh, I touched the finish line, I'm done. No, you go above and beyond. If Lord did not go above and beyond for you and me, you and I wouldn't be here. Lord finished whatever he started, and he gave his all. Literally, every drop of his blood for us. Shed all of our sins, cleansed our sins with his precious blood. Amen. But you and I, we barely do our minimum, right? Emergency Christians are also known as a minimum Christians. They only do minimum, right? When you're singing, you only sing your minimum. Man, you read the Bible, look at someone like David. You think David just opened his hymn book and just, you know, just read the words until the, you know, instrument finishes playing? No. He prays his heart out. He even danced, right? And Michal, you know, fool that she was, she didn't like it, right? And she was punished for that reason. But you and I, you know, when it comes to praising the Lord, do you give it your all all the time, right? You don't have to be the loudest person. That's not what we're talking about. But are you doing it from your heart, all of your heart? Every word, every verse that you sing and praise, praising to the Lord, I mean, do you mean it, right? You give it your all. Because last time I checked, when you guys were doing worldly stuff, 
you know, playing games, playing sports, working out, you know, meeting your friends, going to theme parks. You gave your best, right? You gave your best. You gave your best to the point that you get hurt, right? If you're exercising, right? When was the last time you got hurt for Lord Jesus Christ? When the Bible says, A, all that will live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you haven't suffered for the Lord, you're a minimum Christian, emergency Christian, you're lacking Christian. You haven't really truly done anything for the Lord. And don't give me that question, oh, you know, I don't know how to suffer for Christ. Right? <laughs> Plenty way to do it. Go out there and start passing gospel tracks out. Start talking about Lord Jesus Christ. Go to the corners and just start preaching the word of God. Right? And Bible says we learn, right? You know, according to Romans 1.16, preaching of the gospel is not just for men. It's for women. It's for every single person. You tell them about Jesus Christ. Gospel of Jesus Christ, how he died for them, how he was buried, he rose again. That is preaching. Anybody could do it. Yes. When was the last time you did it? Let alone, you know, even try to do it. Yeah. Right? You haven't even tried. You know what's the worst thing a human being can become? They just give up. And they give up before they even start. They have that self-pity in them. I'm no good. Yeah, you're no good. I'm weak. Yeah, you're weak. I'm stupid. Yeah, you're stupid. But if you're saved, you and I can do all things through Christ. We strengthen us. Amen. You're putting Jesus Christ, you're making Jesus Christ look like worthless, yeah. helpless, powerless. When Lord can do anything, everything through you. Amen. Do you realize who's inside of you if you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior? He is the creator of the universe. Yes. God Almighty. Yes. We, you and I, with our tiny brains, we can't really fathom it. We can't really completely understand. But we could be awestruck about it, how great he is. right? We could just follow what the Bible says. Then, stop being emergency Christians, Christians. Stop taking and putting things off. Whatever it is, whether it's spiritual, whether it's physical, if you could do it, do it. Yes. Ask the Lord for strength to finish it. Or else, you're going to end up, let's go back to it. Let's go to our text first. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Second chapter 4, and we continue. Look at verse 10. You're going to be just like Demas. I'm going to be just like turning into Demas. And don't think that you're better than Demas, right? And he was in the ministry with Apostle Paul. So don't, don't shortchange him either. If you and I are not careful, we could love the world, and we could love this ministry just like that. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Not just Demas, right? Christians to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Luke is finishing the race, right? You and I want to be like Luke, right? Amen. You don't want to be like Demas, who quits in the middle. Albeit he's saved. Albeit, you and I will be in heaven, see each other again. But, man, there's going to be that, like at the thousand year millennium kingdom, there's going to be different rulers, right? Man, I, I, you'll be like somewhere else, right? You'll be probably just sweeping the floor somewhere, right? Because you didn't do as the Lord told you to do. That's why you have to constantly check. You know, Christians, you have to check. Am I really trying to finish the race? And secondly, how am I going to finish the race if we were to end today? That's why you can't wait. Don't wait, right? 
in order to get out of that emergency Christian lazy state, you just can't wait. You just take that step and then just go. And you take that step and just go. You know, let the Lord lead you, right? If you're doing the right thing for the Lord, he's going to lead you into the right path. If you're doing the wrong things, following the flesh, the world, and the devil, it's going to lead you to the wrong path, right? Every Christian who's here and listening, if you ever try to ever do something for the Lord, you know that results are always fruitful if you do it for him wholeheartedly. Yes. But if you are lackadaisical, if you are lazy, you know, if you are half-hearted, and it doesn't really end up well. Yes. Then you have to put your heart into it. And best way to show that you put your heart into it, you do it right away. What do parents love? When their kids do things right away, when you tell them to do it. Amen. What do parents hate? When you tell the kids to do it and they don't do it right away. Amen. They always procrastinate. And simple things. Read your Bible. I'll do it later, Dad. You're, not, you're doing nothing. I'll do it later, Dad. I've got other things to do. Lazy bum. Right? Not just spiritual things. Clean your room. You've all heard it. I've heard it. I'll do it next week. <laughs> I'll do it tomorrow. I have too many things to study. No, you don't. I mean, the time that you take a break, you could clean. Right? You all have time. Me, I have time. It's an excuse when you say, I don't have time. God never put you in a place where you can't do things for him, right? Even the temptations, right? You and I could overcome it. And he never gives anything that we cannot, you know, overcome. It's just you and me just being so lazy and sinful and fleshly. That's why we don't do it. And that's why it's a simple message. Don't wait to do things. Do it right away. Do it from your heart for the Lord all the time, Right? That's why you and I could become, you know, people who could become prepared, right? Apostle Paul was ready to be offered. Who can be ready to do things? Those people are who's prepared. Those people are who's ready, who's done their duty, due diligence. They weren't lazy. They work hard. Christians, you and I cannot take shortcuts. Emergency Christians always like to take shortcuts, right? I know it's a, such a shameful thing to say, but, you know, like during the summer memory verse, you know, you're like, hey, I memorized, right, the whole thing. Whole thing? Yeah. I memorized verse one and last verse. I memorized it. What about in between? Don't ask me, you know. My brain cannot do it. You're a liar. <laughs> I mean, that included me. I mean, shamefully, right? No, age cannot be an excuse either. Whether you're young, whether you're old, you can use age as an excuse not to do your best for the Lord, not to finish whatever you have started, not to finish whatever the Lord has started in your life. You have to finish. And finish fast so that you could do other things, right? You know, the saddest thing is that the Lord gave you this opportunity to do something for Him, right? It took you 50 years to finish. And another Christian, it took him only a couple years to finish. Because they weren't going to be emergency Christian. They were going to be a diligent Christian because they loved the Lord. So they done 50 things for the Lord in their lifetime. But you only done, barely, barely, you've done just one thing for him. Man, that's a shameful Christian. But he's not a, you know, how should I say? He's not someone that you can't really find. He's someone that you can find everywhere. And it's you. You're seeing that person in the mirror, right? You could have done so much more for the Lord thus far. But you still haven't done much for the Lord. And don't think that just because you come to street preaching, church services, and that's all in your life. That's only part of it. Yes. Outside of it, there's so much other things that you 
have to do as a Christian. And don't be the hypocrite. Won't you look like you're doing best inside the church and the ministry and outside of church, you're the worst human being, you know? You can fool me. You can't fool the brethren here, but you can't fool God. God's just right through you, and eventually you're going to be exposed. Emergency Christians always get exposed. God has to put you in your place, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a funny way, but it's also a great way Lord does things, right? Lord's going to let you get away with it for a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then boom, he just exposes you to everybody so that the whole world could see the fool that you've been. And then Lord has given everybody every opportunity, resource. You know, he was there the whole time to help you succeed so that you have zero excuse at the judgment seat of Christ. Even right now, if you're exposed so that you have zero excuse because Lord is perfect, he's fair, and he's just. So don't take advantage of Lord's goodness, Amen. right? Because you are going to feel his chastisement sooner or later if you are continuously fooling around. Yes. You know, whether it's your sin, whether it's anything else in your life, don't stop fooling around. Just do it. You know, you just start doing things that you're supposed to do and you become a different Christian, right? You know, you're not going to be known as that lazy Christian. Right? Whether you like it or not, if you're lazy, no good, last-minute Christian, people know who you are. Not just here, but more outside of church. Your co-workers, you know, your friends, you know, your acquaintances, right? your cousins, they know who you are better than we know who you are. Because they know you better. They spend a lot more time with you than us. Then they're going to be like, oh, man, what a lazy Christian. Why should I become a Christian? You're such a bad testimony. I mean, their blood will be required in your hands. Remember that. But you change. Suddenly, you're no longer a lazy Christian. Suddenly, because you love the Lord, you get right with the Lord, fellowship with the Lord is most important for you, trusting and obeying the Word of God is most important to you, you change. Man, you start things way before you ever started. You finish things way before you ever finish. You're doing things for the Lord, and then it translates into all your rest of your life. Wow. And people are like, man, this person used to be the laziest person. Yeah. Now they're the most diligent. I need to know why. Amen. I'm like, oh, because of Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Man, I need to know more about him. I need to hear from this person. That's where you got to be, Amen. right? Don't just stay here. Don't stay at the rock bottom. Always like barely trying to make it, barely trying to finish it, always emergency lazy. Just start doing things ahead of time. When it is never right to do, you know, wrong to do right, especially when you're late in the game. What does that mean? When you're an emergency Christian just trying to finish it, you're going to try to cut shortcuts, and you're going to commit a lot of sins. Yeah. It's, it's just learn from history. But human beings never learn from history. But be wise about it, Christian. Learn from it, right? Yes. If you continuously wait, if you continue to become an emergency Christian, your sin will increase, 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 increase. And at the end of the day, you never finish anything for the Lord. And all you're going to do is regret and regret and regret and regret. I, I really don't want to be a regretting Christian. No. I want to become a, someone who could say that looking back at my Christian life, looking back at my life, man, I was lazy. I started out late and I did all this. But now, you know, by grace of God, you know, by my willingness to serve him wholeheartedly, I'm just finishing things and finishing things. I'm actually doing for the Lord. I give him all the glory. And I'm glad that I could be used by God even a little bit. That's why Apostle Paul could say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Don't you want to have that kind of testimony when you're leaving this place? Let's pray. Dear Father, many people don't even finish the race, Lord. You saved us from hell. 
by your infinite grace and mercy through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have given us all the opportunity, resources to our best for you and do well in this race. But we always become lazy. We become emergency Christians and we commit to sins just to trying to finish things. Lord, help us to get right with you, confess our sins and become someone who never takes things for granted, who never do things later in the time when they could do it today, Lord. Help us to become Christians who's productive, diligent, who does things that they're supposed to do each day, getting closer to you and keeping the fellowship with you, Lord. I pray that you'll be with everyone here and listening, be with those who weren't able to make it. Hold them, Lord, especially those who's going through the physical ailments, Lord. And above all, Lord, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.